<laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I needed a third viewpoint. I had the hero, I had the heroine, but I needed the third viewpoint to carry the mystery on through. And so I went back and I realized, well, we have them confused, <laughs> confused, confused people. But what I needed was I needed um, a, a, a different viewpoint, like maybe even the murderer. And you don't need to say who the murderer is. You know, you're just telling the viewpoint from his or her view, from, from his or her viewpoint, and you don't have to say who it is. Um, the the book Red Hawk, Red Hawk's Woman, was one of my mysteries. And there's another book that was a mystery, which was uh, Lakota Princess. Those two have been my mysteries you know, out of my 16 books. So I only had two. You guys probably have much more experience than I do. But in each one, I found that it was very necessary to have that third viewpoint or fourth or fifth viewpoint in order to move the mystery through, in order for the, not the heroine and hero to know what's going on, but for the reader to know what's going on. The reader won't know who the murderer is. You, of course, never get that way until the end. But you can have the murderer in there, in his viewpoint, and, and telling it from, from that point of view. Okay, I, that, that's another example of something that you might find. Um, let me think of another example, because I almost always get into writer's block. <laughs> um, is there anyone here who does write on deadline? Okay. You, you, you write a deadline? No, I think we're next door. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's a luxury, I call it a luxury. Because um, writing under deadline, uh, you don't have the luxury of stepping back from it for a week and just letting it gel. And then coming back and going forward. You know, or um, particularly if you're writing a contemporary, stepping back and going out. You know, go and visit whatever it is that you're writing about and, and see it. Um, for a historical author, uh, some of the things are research. You know, go research in that area. Maybe you didn't get your scene right. Um, the, the setting itself can have a lot to do with, um, with your writer's block. There was that one scene that I was telling you about, but there was another book that I did, which was, um, what was the name of that one? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it was Wolf Shadow's Promise. Wolf Shadow's Promise. And um, she had a tunnel that had been discovered. And I had, I had uh, come up with this idea when I went through Montana and Wyoming, and we went down in some mines. And I came up with this idea of the, of the heroine having a mine under, under the fort where she was. Well, outside of these two times that I went into a cave, I didn't know anything about it. And so I had to do a lot of research. I went and I looked at caves. Did you know, by the way, this is just on him. Did you know that those rocks in those caves are considered alive? Did you know that? They grow. They multiply. If you touch them, they, they die. It takes them thousands of years to live again. Isn't that amazing? That's why when you go into a lot of these caverns, they say, do not touch. Do not touch the rocks because they're alive. Isn't that interesting? Just yeah. inside. <laughs> Three minutes. Three minutes. Oh, OK. Uh, well, once again, I will just take any other questions if you have anything at all. Yes? I was just wondering, what's your main theme about the relationship uh, for it to be satisfying? Is it Trusting each other, um, what, what, what holds your character together? It really I mean, did. all your books, so I'm really fascinated. You have? No, I want to. Oh, okay. okay. Um, um, it's different with every story, to tell you the truth. It's, it's uh, as, you, as you write, your characters are different people. Um, Is trust one of your, uh, trusting the other person relying on them? Or, not necessarily. Some of these uh, writers always talk about that. that she said that she, she finally decided that it was having to trust each other 
Wow. Now see, with my characters, mostly a lot of times throughout the whole book, they do not trust each other. <laughs> and Red Hawk's woman, they both suspected each other as the villain. Um, let's see, and, and a few other books like that, they, they, they have distrust of each other. Usually uh, for the, them to make love, um, it has to do with animal magnetism, for one thing, um, kindness, uh, and, and both of them spot uh, different qualities in the other that they admire. You know, like in, in him, she might spot a quality of truthfulness, or um, she might spot, a, or he might come to her rescue, of, of, or something like that. And then she might look at him with a different eye, you know, sort of like, wow. Um, this happens in, in my new book. You know, there's a, like I said, it's in the vein of Last of the Mohicans. And so there's a big water scene. And the, the hero comes to Heron's rescue uh, quite a few times. And that's when she sort of steps, well, actually, they make love before that. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, during this, she is stepping back and having a look. Now, um, any more questions? And then I have one announcement before I want to. Before I, oh, did you have a question? Or? Oh, okay, good. So I wanted to tell you, um, I am going to be giving away uh, at least one book for each person that buys one of my new ones. I, I brought some of my back list. So you'll get two books for one. Um, if, uh, it's just like a little special that I'm doing. I came home from um, Florida and cleaned house. And I found a bunch of my books and I went, oh, I'll give these away. <laughs> so, um, so for today, it's, it's, two, it's a twofer, two for one. Woo